All right. Uh, good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you to Ms. Moore and Ms. Alma for uh, inviting me here to do a presentation. We're going to do a presentation on a SEL topic, uh, social and emotional learning. Most of it is going to be on the importance of attitude and and why attitude important is to get us to success. So my name is uh, Fazil Chohan. I'm a school social worker. Do you know where I'm located? Mm. Do you know where my office is? See, I saw one familiar face, right? Okay, so right over here in 06, next to Think Together. So my job is to provide uh, support, which includes uh, these kinds of trainings to raise awareness about social emotional learning, about mental health topics, and also to teach life skills. And uh, so, so that work includes presentations like this and also uh, group, uh, group discussion and uh, meeting in groups and also one-on-one -on -one counseling. So why you would need to come talk to me is, uh, is related to this. So a famous psychologist named Maslow came up with this idea that human beings like you, like me, like all of us, we have five needs. So at the bottom is survival needs, which are biological, that to, just to survive, to stay alive, we need food and drink. And once that need is met, then the next need is shelter, so uh, uh, a safe space. And then love and belongingness, which is relationships. And then at the next level is, he calls it self-esteem, but basically that's success and achievement. That's kind of what I'm going to focus on mostly today. And then at the top, after all these needs have been met, then the person can go and be at their best. So this is you at your best. Uh, he calls it self-actualization or self-realization or being your ultimate best. Uh, to be who you always wanted to be. So why you might want to come talk to me is, yeah, you know, we, we might be struggling with survival or not feeling safe, so that's here, safety. Not feeling connected, uh, relationships, issues related to relationships, which can be difficult, and success and achievement, or that could be grades, or going to college, and uh, it could be attendance, and so on. And to, to be your best, so uh, how many play sports? Who plays sports here? Do you? No? Nobody plays sports? Okay, so sports is a good example for over here at the top that uh, you are playing football, soccer, basketball, and you want to be your best, or you're running track, and you want to go faster. So that could be up over here. Like, you're running a mile in 10 minutes, now you want to run it in five or nine, and you're trying to be your best. So, so that's, that's what uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs it is. So I'm going to show you uh, a little video. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm going to pause it for a second. So what would you do in this situation? Calm down. Okay, very good. What else? There's no right answer. We're just having a discussion. What would you do in this situation? Yeah. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Very good. Very good. So, so you're you're giving me the right answer, right? But, but let's talk about like what would you do, like impulsively. What's your first gut reaction? What do you want to do? Before you get to, uh, I need to breathe in, breathe out, I need to calm down. What's the first thing you might want to do? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Can you put away your phones? One, two, three people on the phones. Can you put away your phone? So, so what, n nothing comes to mind, like, you know, usually people say, uh, huh? Yeah, you, you, you want to, you, you know, it's, it's a conflict situation, you might, not, you might want to hit him. So, so then that's like the first thing you, you want to do. Then you try to calm down, then you take a few deep breaths. <laughs>
you are a really quiet group. So we'll, we'll go to the, the next thing. So I'm going to put it here and ask, what do you see? I'll put it over here closer first. What do you see? Water water. Okay, very good. What else? What else? Observations. No, what do you see? What do you notice? There's no right answer. We're just having a conversation. Uh, this is not a test. <laughs> Is it supposed to be a fun activity? Yeah. There's water. Say that again. There's water. There's water. So uh, you said it's half. Yeah, halfway done. Halfway. Yeah. Halfway done. Halfway done. So is it half empty or half full? Half full. Half, half full. Okay. Half full. Half full. Empty. Half, half empty. empty. Half empty. Okay. So again, there's no right or wrong answer. How many say half full? And how many say half empty? Okay, so kind of half and half. So why, why I bring this here is just to, as an example of observing, paying attention, and perspective. So I'm going to put it here. Um, so with this topic that we're talking about right now is related to perspective. So this, this video, is, is it also about perspective? Yes. Like the water bottle is like the cookies. Yes? So, so the cookies were there, and two different people are looking at that, the cookies in two different ways. Yes. Yes? So similarly, the water bottle, Different people are looking at it in different ways. It's half full, it's a drink, it's made of plastic, it's kind of crushed, it's been used, somebody drank it, maybe it looks half full, it looks half empty, um, and so on. So, so with, uh, when in, in life, do we have problems? Does everybody have problems? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have problems. Everybody has problems. Right? So when I look at when I look at a real problem, it's when it's a real problem. <coughs> the problem is is there. <coughs> it could be that I have a difficult assignment. It could be that I'm having trouble coming to school on time. It could be that I'm having trouble paying attention in school. It could be I'm having trouble in a relationship with friends or schoolmates. Maybe somebody's telling me they're going to jump me. A any problem that's real, right? So I'm, I'm looking at a, a problem. I'm facing a problem. So when, when there's a problem, there are two ways of being. I can, I can look at it and say, yes, I have a problem, I have a problem, I have a problem. Sometimes we say, I don't have a problem, and there is a problem, that's called denial. But then the next step is, yes, acknowledging, yes, I do have a problem, yes, there is a problem. And so, but if, if I keep talking about the problem, if I keep focused on the problem part of the situation, then I'm going to be problem-oriented. So I'm kind of stuck in the mode of, I have a problem, I have a problem, I have a problem. So, so the problem does not go away, because I'm just talking about the problem, right? So now I have to, sh that's one perspective, problem-oriented perspective. So I have to change that into what, 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 what should I do next? I say, yes, I have a problem, I have a difficult assignment, I'm having trouble understanding the subject, whatever problem. So, yes, I have a problem, problem, problem. Now what do I do? What's the next step? 
try to solve it. Try to solve it? Very good, thank you. So, so from the problem-oriented mode, I now go to solution-oriented. So now I get busy, instead of getting busy talking about the problem, I get busy talking about the solution or trying to find a solution. So that will require some kind of action. So the, the, the problem on its own is not going to go away. So I have to go to solution mode and then uh, do, do what I need to do, find out the solution. And at that point, sometimes you can figure it out yourself. And if you, if you cannot figure it out yourself, then what do you do? Ask for help. Very good, very good. Thank you. So asking for help is a very important step. So there's a word. Uh, when you ask for, for help from me, then my job is to support you, right? My job is to provide support. So then what is your job? When my job is to provide support, then what is your job? To do it. To? Oh. To do it. To do it. Okay. What else? <coughs> Somebody else said something? Did you say something? Somebody else said something? To so work, To work, to, uh, to try to participate. Okay. So we, so we talk, talk. Okay. Very good. So the, the word is when somebody, when you ask for help, that person is going to provide you support. So their job is to, my job is to support you, and then your job is to be supportable. Have you heard this word before? So supportable just means be able to receive support. Like, to be teachable is to be able to receive the teaching, right? To be able to receive the help. So that is a key point. To be able to be successful, like in the pyramid, to get better and better, we always need help. You can't do it alone. So you have teachers, you have mentors, you have parents, you have elders, you have peers, you even have uh, YouTube, internet, many sources to learn. And uh, but when you get support from from people, you are being supportable. You have to be supportable and also teachable, and that's what's going to help you be successful. So uh, the point is that there's a lot of help available in school with your teachers, with people like me, admin, and so on. So. Remember to ask for, for help when you need it. And uh, if you are behind in assignments, uh, you know, have those conversations with your teacher one on one and see what you can do to, to raise those grades. So uh, we, we're talking about perspective and uh, who knows this word attitude? Or what does it mean? Attitude. What is what does it mean? Attitude. Anybody? What does it mean? How, how, how do you use this word in a sentence? When you hear somebody use this word, attitude. You guys are a quiet group. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. When you're mad. When you're mad? Uh-huh, that's a kind of attitude, yes, very good. He's giving me attitude? Yes, very good, very good. So most of the time, when somebody says, uh, he's giving me an attitude, or I don't like their attitude, 
they're using it like what it means is bad attitude. But attitude can be good or bad. So uh, it's an important tool to use for success. So here it is. This is three different diagrams. This is like learning. This is my place in the world. And this is about attitude. So think of attitude as it's an invisible sign that you're holding. So like when, when you saw me, when you walked in, you saw my attitude. You say something. You, you notice I have some attitude. So it's, it's written, it's, I'm carrying it. It's my way of being. It's, it's the way that I'm being. It's my approach or my demeanor or my disposition. It's, it's the way that I'm being. Uh, another word is my mindset. Mindset is, uh, you've heard of the, the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. So, so the mindset is another way of saying attitude. So a, a lot of times attitude is used as a, uh, to mean bad attitude, but a good saying is like your, your attitude is your altitude. What might that mean? Your attitude is your altitude. What is altitude? Do you know this word altitude? So altitude is like, uh, have you ever been in an airplane? Yeah. yeah. Yes? Do you ever, do you remember maybe they announced like we are flying in, at an altitude of 30,000 feet. Yeah. No? So, so altitude is, is height. It's like the airplane is flying at 30,000 feet above sea level. That's height. So your, your altitude is your attitude, or your attitude is your altitude. So your, your attitude can determine where you are. So I could be feeling low, that's my attitude. I'm feeling sad. But I can shift the key point. The key point about this topic is that you're not responsible for your injury. I'm not responsible for the consequences. Right? I might say that, right? Yes. You got hurt, I, I threw you something. You were supposed to catch it. Uh -huh. It's not my fault. So if I say that, uh, then, and then I do it again, and I, I do it to somebody else, and I do it to somebody else. So, and I keep saying the same thing, it's not my fault. Uh -huh. So, uh, what, what, does that, what does that say about me? What, sh what should I do or should I not do? <coughs> Throw it at somebody. Throw anything at somebody. It, huh? makes, you, it makes you unresponsible. Yes, very good. Say that again. That makes you unresponsible. That, that makes me unresponsible. Very good. So, I need to be responsible. I need to be responsible for my actions because my actions have results. They have consequences. So, whatever I do is going to have a consequence. But if I say consequences don't exist, then I can continue to be irresponsible, right? So if I'm irresponsible, then I'm not accountable. So what is accountable? Taking actions upon your own. Say that again. Somebody said something? Taking action? Taking actions for your responsibilities? Yes. So, so to accountability is like uh, taking charge of it, basically, right? Say that again. Taking charge of it. Yeah, yeah. Very good. So, um, if somebody holds me accountable because I am causing some harm by throwing stuff and hurting other people, then they're holding me accountable. So, a, a better way to do it is before other people hold me accountable, I hold myself accountable, and that can be difficult. And that requires that I pay attention to what I'm doing, and then I take responsibility for, <coughs> for what I'm doing, 
and I admit that what I'm doing has consequences, and if for whatever I'm doing I hold myself accountable, or I allow other people to hold me accountable, so that what is the result if I'm responsible, and when I make a mistake, somebody holds me accountable, what is the result? I, I, I throw a ball, uh, and let's say I'm playing sports, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing fouls. Now the referee holds me accountable, saying that's a foul, that's a foul. Then what is the result that's going to happen to my game? It's going to get canceled. Say that again. It's going to get canceled. Okay, but but if I the game will be over. The game yeah, will be yeah, over. Yeah, because if you injure the person, it will say, "Oh no, no more." Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the the game can be over. That that could be a consequence. Yeah. And uh, but when but what will I do? What should I do? When, when I did a foul and it ended up hurting somebody and the referee says it's, you committed a foul and if I, if I hold myself accountable and I'm responsible, what will I do after that? Apologize. Okay, very good. And very good. And what will I do after that? See if the person does, that it's okay, if they're okay. Okay, very good. And then what will I do after that with me? What will I do about my behavior? Try to change it. Very good. So, so I'm going to change. I'm going to be able to change in a way that I'm going to be able to learn and grow. Right? So that's, that's the path to learning. Um, that I'm going to be able to, when I pay attention, when I say that my actions have consequences, then I hold myself responsible, then I hold myself accountable, then I look at uh, that maybe I made a mistake, or maybe I didn't make a mistake, I just need to do better. Maybe I, I'm getting a, a C grade and I need to change to get a B grade or the A grade. So as I pay attention, then I'm going to be able to to learn. I'm going to be able to change my actions and my experiences. So when I keep learning, keep learning, then some of those lessons become wisdom that I can carry with, with me for the rest of my life. Now back to attitude. Um, attitude colors what I do and how I talk. So, the, so attitude is a invisible sign I'm holding, right? So my way of being is reflected in my, the way that I talk and the way that I act. And then the way that I act and the way that I talk is going to have consequences, it's going to have re results. So for example, in, in studying, one of the results that I might want is I want an A grade. I'm getting a B grade right now and I want an A grade. Or I'm getting a C grade and I want a B grade. So I, one thing I can do is I can change my, my attitude, my approach to learning, or my approach to that class where I'm getting the, the C grade. So as I change my attitude, why I'm changing my attitude is to, to get different results. So changing my attitude can get me different results. So in, in a sports analogy, right before the game, you might feel a little nervous. You might feel a little scared right before a test in class. You're, getting, you're about to take the exam. What are the feelings right before the exam? Anxious. Very good. What else? Frustrated. Frustrated. Very good. What else? What, what are some feelings right before the exam? <coughs> Do you have fear? You're scared? Right before the exam? Nervous. Nervous? Yes. Um, you get stressed. Stressed. Very good. And how about fear? You're a little scared. Am I going to pass? 
How hard is it going to be? Anxious. Anxious. Very good. So, so that's that's my attitude at that time. So, at that time, all of those words you said, that's part of my attitude. I'm I'm nervous. I'm anxious. I'm stressed. I I have fear. I have doubt. What's going to happen? Right. All of that is my attitude. So, is is that the best attitude to have if I want to pass the exam? Yes. Yes, but if you have fear and nervous, that's not the best attitude. It's not the best attitude, right? So, so now I need to shift. I need to shift that attitude into into what? So, what do you tell yourself to shift your attitude? What, what is an attitude? I'm gonna pass. Yeah. Yes. Anything else? How do you overcome the fear, the anxiety, the nervousness? What do you tell yourself? Just don't think about it. Don't don't think about the fear and anxiety, right? Kind of put it aside. And then then just take the next step. So that's that's here. So what I tell myself, I talk to myself, those are called affirmations. I can do it. I I remind myself I did this the studying, I did the preparation, my teacher prepared me, we had a mock test. I've been doing my homework. There are some things that I'm not 100%. Um, I, I haven't mastered all of those 100%, but but I think I can do it. I think I can even, I, I, I think most of this uh, exam, I'm gonna be able to do it. There might be some difficulties, but I'll, I'll deal with them. So affirmations are, uh, things, do you know what affirmations are? Yes, it's basically like something that you basically like tell to yourself. Very good. So if you take one and pass it along. So affirmations are things you tell yourself, you affirm to yourself, like affirm means like, yes, affirmative, like positive. I can do it. I'm good, I'm a good person, and then you take these and pass it down. You can get this one. Huh? So affirmations are a tool that we can use to, to affect our thoughts. So attitude is Attitude is, is based on my thoughts, and my thoughts are based on my beliefs. So, uh, so I can change my thoughts by doing affirmations. So my thoughts are like, right before the exam, my thoughts are, I, I don't know if I can pass this, this is too difficult, uh, do I have enough time, all of that. So. I change those thoughts by, by doing affirmations, by, by taking control of my thoughts and saying some positive things. So, so that's how I can affect my attitude. And let me see if there's anything else. So I'll, I'll end there. We talked about perspective, <coughs> shifting our perspective from being problem-oriented to solution-oriented, and to be supportable, to ask for help, and then receive the help. And then, you know, make any changes needed to get better so I learn and I grow. And being responsible that my actions have consequences to take taking responsibility that's part of growing up right that place of like going from being a young man into uh, being an adult and that's taking more and more responsibility but that happens every step of the way right at every age 
we are supposed to become more and more responsible. So a good way, good, good phrase for that, a good word for that is mature. Becoming more, more, more mature. It, it doesn't mean like you become serious. There's a, there's a place for fun and having fun and recreation and entertainment is very important. But that's not everything, right? So in life, you have to have a balance. So um, being responsible, becoming more and more mature. When I, when I need to I hold myself accountable or let other people hold me accountable so that I can learn and grow, so I can become better. So in sports, when I have a coach, I let him uh, hold me accountable or, or I am teachable so I can, my game can get better. Right? So in, in my classroom, uh, I, I'm open to my teacher so I can learn and get better. And then the importance of attitude, like for example, having an attitude of gratitude because that can determine how high you can go. So your attitude is your gratitude. Your, your attitude is your altitude. And um, so with that, I will stop there. Any questions? Any comments? So we have these two things. So uh, I could ask a question and then hand it out that way. Um, question. Uh, who, who came up with this? I was fine. <laughs> okay. okay, you already had one of these. So, um, what else? Uh, the guy with the pyramid, what's his name? The, the five needs. Remember the picture at the beginning? Uh, biological needs, safety, relationships, achievement, success. What's his name? Do you remember? Okay, his name is Maslow. Uh, who remembers my room number? Oh, 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 okay. Oh, okay. He faces that. Good. Oh, six. Oh, six. Which one? All right. Uh, last question. Um, to be successful, what do you need to do? Huh? To be successful, what do you need to do? To, uh, to graduate from high school, what do you need to do? Work. Work hard. Yeah. Okay. You got, one, you got the door in, right? Okay, what else? What else do you need to do? To be successful, to graduate from high school, what do you, what do you need to do? To learn? Okay. Very good. So you learn and grow. And uh, with that, I'll close. Thank you so much for your, for your time and for your attention. And thanks to your teacher, teachers of this forum, to uh, let me come here and do a presentation. So remember, come by, stop by. It, uh, we can just chat. You can just come and see what the room looks like. Uh, sometimes you just need a break. Sometimes you just want to, you know, just walk through, come by. All right, so everybody sign the sheet, the signing sheet? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you so much.